Actions of the hypothalamus illustrate once again how closely the endocrine and nervous systems work together. This pea-sized part of the brain constantly checks conditions inside the body. In addition to temperature, it monitors blood pressure, the amount of water and salt in our blood, and many other things. The hypothalamus is a rather unique organ in the human body. It helps to check conditions within the body and at the same time directs hormones to target tissues, in some instances helping to start and in other instances helping to stop certain conditions that need to be regulated within the human body. While it is part of the brain, the hypothalamus also acts like an endocrine gland by releasing hormones that affect the ways other endocrine glands do their jobs. These hormones move to the nearby pituitary gland. The pituitary secretes many different kinds of hormones. Some signal other endocrine glands to secrete their own hormones. The pituitary gland is a remarkable gland often referred to as the master gland. It tells other endocrine organs when to turn on and when to turn off. And the pituitary gland has the role of regulating a whole host of other hormones in the body. In this way, the endocrine system is like a smoothly coordinated orchestra. The pituitary is the conductor of this orchestra. And other endocrine glands are different musicians that the conductor signals when to play and when not to play. See, you're way higher than Dad's waist now. Besides regulating the actions of other endocrine glands, the pituitary secretes growth hormone, which targets cells in the bones, muscles, and other places in the body. This hormone regulates growth throughout childhood. In early adolescence, the pituitary increases the amount of growth hormone it secretes, and growth can be particularly rapid. But when most people are about 16 to 18 years old, they stop growing, because their bones and other tissues stop responding to growth hormone. Sometimes the pituitary doesn't produce the right amount of growth hormone. The consequences can be dramatic. In the 1800s, a person nicknamed Tom Thumb was unusually short because his pituitary produced too little growth hormone. When he was 11, he was only 25 inches or 64 centimeters tall. A century later, Robert Wadlow grew to a height of almost 9 feet or about 270 centimeters because his pituitary produced too much growth hormone. Here, he towers over his normal-sized father. Examples like Tom Thumb and Robert Wadlow, however, are rare. People with normal amounts of growth hormone grow to be many different sizes. While hormones regulate growth, diet and other factors also affect how tall or short a person will be. Size isn't the only change that occurs as a child grows into an adult. Look at a series of photographs of the same person taken over a number of years. As she went through childhood, she grew bigger. But the differences between an eight-year-old and the same person when she was 13 become noticeable for other reasons as well. These changes differ for boys and girls. For girls, endocrine glands called the ovaries control the onset of puberty, the time when a person becomes sexually mature. The ovaries produce a hormone called estrogen. As estrogen levels increase during puberty, girls develop breasts, body hair, as well as fat around their hips and other parts of their bodies. In boys, endocrine glands called testes produce another kind of hormone, testosterone. Testosterone causes their voices to become deeper and their muscles to become bigger. They also grow facial hair and hair on other parts of their bodies. For both males and females, certain hormones prepare their bodies for parenthood. 
Sperm cells develop in the testes. Menstruation begins. A female's menstrual cycle, in which the ovaries release eggs, is also controlled by the actions of different hormones. Although the effects of hormones during puberty are dramatic, hormones play important roles throughout the human lifespan. A hormone called oxytocin causes contractions of the uterus during labor. After a child is born, oxytocin and another hormone called prolactin cause the breasts to produce milk. Somewhere between the ages of 45 and 55, other hormonal changes occur in women. Their ovaries produce less estrogen and stop releasing eggs. This is called menopause. At this stage in their lives, they can no longer conceive children. As men get older, the levels of testosterone decline. Among other effects, they lose some muscle tone. As people continue to age, still other hormonal changes occur, and scientists are researching the effects of hormones on the aging process. Endocrine glands and their hormones do many other things. The thymus, for example, helps our bodies fight bacteria and viruses that cause disease. The pancreas plays other important roles in maintaining our health. Embedded inside the pancreas are endocrine cells that secrete the hormone insulin. Insulin helps regulate the amount of a certain kind of sugar in our blood. This sugar is called glucose. Glucose is the body's fuel. It provides the energy for cells to function, as gasoline provides the fuel and energy for a car. Just as with other substances in the body, the amount of glucose in the bloodstream has to be kept within narrow limits in order for us to function well. Drinking an ice cream milkshake, for example, will slightly raise the levels of glucose in our blood. When there is too much glucose in the blood, the pancreas responds by producing more insulin. Insulin removes excess glucose and stores it in the liver. For most of us, this finely tuned system helps maintain just the right levels of glucose. But for some people, the pancreas doesn't function properly. My name is Peter and I have diabetes. Diabetes is a disease of the endocrine system. It's when the pancreas stops making insulin. Peter has to carefully keep track of what he eats and how much he exercises because both these things affect how much glucose is in his blood. If Peter's diabetes were left untreated, excess glucose would lead to serious health problems. To take care of myself, I need to um, take blood tests. When I take a blood test, I'm measuring the amount of uh, glucose that's in my blood. Based on the levels of glucose, Peter gives himself injections of insulin. Taking insulin is a way of keeping my blood glucose regulated. Like the more insulin you take, the lower your sugar will be, because insulin lowers your um, blood glucose level. So I want to take um, you know, the right amount so it's not too high or not too low. Developments in the treatment of diabetes have given hope to people like Peter that they can lead normal lives. We are learning more about other problems with the endocrine system as well. For example, scientists are researching the effects of hormones on human emotions, particularly depression. What makes people anxious or sad? These are questions that have often been the focus of art, and more and more, they are also the focus of medicine. We are daily learning more about how the endocrine system may affect our mood, how our day-to-day -day living may be affected by hormonal changes and as we better understand those hormonal changes we can hope to improve the lives of those individuals who may be depressed or may have problems with mood swings hopefully we'll be able to address those issues in the future our endocrine glands and the hormones they produce maintain a delicate chemical balance a balance that is essential to our health and survival